In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some tools that you can use to take your Webflow project to the next level. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Connor and on this channel I make a whole bunch of videos to show you how you can build your online business with no-code tools like Webflow, Airtable and Zapier. So in today's video, I am going to be diving deeper into certain tools that you can use to really take your Webflow projects to the next level. Now if you've been on this channel before, you'll know that I use tools like Zapier or Integromat to connect a variety of apps to my Webflow CMS, but the tools that I am going to be showcasing today can be used without having to use any of these third-party automation tools. Now because Webflow has gone incredibly popular over the last few years there are now a huge variety of tools that you can actually use to integrate it into your Webflow project so if I have forgotten any that you feel are crucial then please let me know in the comments down below and I will add them in a future iteration of this video. So the tools that I chose today I chose for one of three reasons and number one it is a popular feature request on the Webflow wishlist and a native Webflow solution doesn't exist yet. Number two I have used this tool myself and I rate it or number three it is a tool that I haven't used myself but a lot of people have recommended it to me and the only reason I haven't used it yet is because I haven't come across a use case where it would have been useful for any of my projects. But before we get into the first tool, do me a quick little favor. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for more no-code videos. Also, if you want me to make more Webflow specific videos, then also hit like on this video. It lets me know that you want me to make more of these videos. Plus it helps spread the word about Webflow and these tools that are out here. But without further ado, let's get into the first tool. So the first tool I wanted to talk about today is Optily. And what Optily allows you to do is to automate automatically resize images that you might be using on your Webflow site. Now I made a more detailed breakdown of Optily last week so I'll link it in the video above and you can kind of see how it all works and how I use it to resize all of the images on the Unicorn Factory Canada. So the reason why you might want to use a tool like Optily is because if you start adding images to your Webflow site over time those image sizes get quite big and if you don't optimize the size of your images it will have a negative effect on your overall load speed of your page and that in turn negatively affects your SEO score which means it won't be as easy for people to discover your website. Now, if you only have a few images on your website or you don't have that many images inside of your Webflow collections, then it's probably easy enough to just download those images and then compress them for a tool like TinyPNG. But if you do have a very image heavy website or a lot of your collection items contain images, then using a tool like Optily is super useful because it will just be a huge time saver. So I did it for the Unicorn Factory Canada as you'll see in the video that I linked above. But after I was done with that, I also did it on the Unicorn Factory New Zealand, which has two and a half thousand images and I managed to compress about one gigabyte worth of files and that was amazing for my overall SEO score and for the overall page load speed. So I highly endorse Optily, it's a fantastic tool, you don't even really need to do much but the overall result that it generates for you is really outstanding. So the next set of tools that I want to introduce you to allow your website visitors to search or filter through different collection lists on your Webflow pages. So on the Unicorn Factory Canada I have a lot of freelancers and what I want to allow my website visitors to do is to quickly filter out freelancers based on a set of criteria that's important to them. So in this case if I want a website visitor to search for things like uh, just consultants I have this type of functionality that allows me to filter out the freelancers that have that particular skill attached to their CMS item. I can also allow my website visitors to search by just typing in certain search terms into the search bar above and all of this is made possible by a tool called Jetboost. So I've talked about Jetboost a lot on this channel it allows you to basically do dynamic filtering, searching and a whole bunch of other fun things if you are using the Webflow CMS. Now there's some fantastic use cases for example with people building custom directories, people building really advanced blogs. So whatever your use case is, if you are using the Webflow CMS then Jetboost can really help you take the filtering and the overall user experience to the next level. An alternative tool that is available to do pretty much the same functionality is the FinSuite CMS library. So if you don't know the FinSuite guys yet, they make a whole bunch of awesome YouTube videos on how to take your Webflow projects to the next level so I'd highly recommend checking them out as well but what they have done with the CMS library is essentially built the functionality that you can also implement with Jetboost that allow you to do things like load, filter and search for different types of CMS items inside of your collection lists. So using the FinSwit CMS library involves a bit more custom code than Jetboost but it is free to use so if you are on a budget this might be a very great solution to use in order to really take your web 
for CMS to the next level. Either way, I use JetBoost, but I think both platforms are fantastic. What the FinSuite dudes are doing is phenomenal. So I definitely recommend checking out both tools and then just going with what works best for you. So the next two tools are a solution to the most requested feature on the Webflow wishlist, which is user accounts and membership functionality. So the tool that I use on the Unicorn Factory is MemberStack. And what that allows me to do is to create things like user dashboards where I can allow my freelancers to update their accounts, to add case studies and a whole bunch of things like that. So the Unicorn Factory is only one particular use case. Some other use cases that you can use MemberStack for are things, for example, having premium content for a blog that you might want to run. And it's a really straightforward process to integrate into your Webflow project. So once you get the hang of Webflow, learning how to implement MemberStack onto your site isn't that difficult. There are definitely a few little bits and pieces here and there that you need to learn, but I'll link a video to a tutorial on my YouTube channel above so you can kind of check out what you'll have to do at a high level. Now, an alternative tool that you can use to MemberStack is Outsetter. Now, I myself haven't used Outsetter before, but a lot of people in the Webflow community speak very highly of it, so I thought it was only fair to include them in this video. Now, similar to MemberStack, it allows you to do things like have a login portal, have user accounts, hide certain types of contents based on different membership types, and it integrates directly into your Webflow sites. They also have a bunch of additional little features that MemberStack doesn't offer, for example, automated emails that you can send to your customers, a custom CRM. So if you are looking for an option, you can either choose MemberStack or Outsetter. Just go and check out the different tools, see what your specific requirements are. Any of those two should really get the job done. So now that we have got the most requested feature on the Webflow wishlist covered, now let's jump to the second one, which is multi-language sites and CMS fields. Now a tool that allows you to automatically translate your Webflow sites from one language to the other is a tool called Weglot. Now I haven't used Weglot myself because I haven't had any use cases where I've had to translate my sites into a different language. But as you can see from the actual website, it is actually quite easy to just see how it goes from say English to German to a whole bunch of other languages just by connecting it to Weglot. Now, as I said, I haven't used it myself, but I have seen a demo of Weglot before and it's really impressive what it does. Basically, it does all of the translations for you automatically, but if you want to go ahead and change the wording of certain types of translations, then you can just jump into the tool, make those changes, and then that will automatically apply to your Webflow site. Now, again, if you want to see a demo of it, you should go and check out the FinSuite walkthrough of Weglot where they show you how you can set up a multi-language site. It's, again, very impressive that this is possible and I am actually going to be implementing this into my Unicorn Factory Canada site because I also want to have a French version of the Unicorn Factory Canada. So another highly requested feature on the Webflow wishlist is a way to make your Webflow sites more GDPR compliant. And that brings us right back to the FinSuite fellas who actually have built a tool that allows you to have a cookie consent pop-up come up on your site that then allows your users to opt into whatever their preferences are for tracking on your website. So like most of the FinSuite integration, the way it works is you just install the script on your website and then you start tagging links div blocks, all sorts of different things with attributes. And it's a very simple, straightforward way to have a cookie consent form on your website. Now, unfortunately, I actually ended up with a different cookie consent tool because FinSuite hadn't released this particular tool yet. And the one that I went with is termsfeed.com. Now, I actually didn't use termsfeed for that cookie consent tool in particular. I actually initially used it to just create a privacy policy and a terms and conditions. But when I had created, I also saw that they allow you to then add a cookie consent pop up to your website for free. Again, all they do is they give you the script, you install it on your site, you basically do like a little bit of tagging based on the different types of tools that you use. And then as soon as people come to your website, it pops up and they can opt in or opt out of being tracked with certain types of platforms. So from what I can tell, both of these tools do the same thing, but the FinSuite tool is free. Whereas if you want to use termsuite.com, you actually have to buy a privacy policy or terms and conditions generator so if you haven't got one yet that might be an option otherwise the FinSuite cookie consent tool will absolutely be the right thing for you if you are setting that up inside of Webflow. On to the next tool which is no code lytics. Now I actually had a chat to the founder of no code lytics the other week so I decided to include him in this video. Now what no code lytics allows you to do is to basically see how certain types of people use your website and a really cool thing about it is is that it integrates with member stack and outsider meaning that if you have user accounts you can also see when 
the last time was that someone logged into your platform and it is just easy to set up which is a key benefit of the tool. Now I personally use Google Analytics, I have been for ages so I don't really have a need for this product at the moment but with that being said, setting up Google Analytics and doing things like link tracking or setting up custom events is quite a bit more difficult than with an out of the box tool like no code lytics especially if you want to track things like how people use your JetBoost search or tag filtering then that might be something that might be slightly too complicated to set up in something like Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics so if that is the case for you then I'll definitely recommend a checking out no code lytics on to the next tool and the next tool is called Monto now Monto is a tool that you can use to basically make your Webflow shops or your Webflow e-commerce sites even better by integrating things like reviews or abandoned cart emails. So I personally haven't built a site in Webflow e-commerce yet so I haven't actually come across this but this tool was recommended to me by someone that I've been working with and from what I can tell the way that it works is you can integrate these types of widgets onto your Webflow site, you can customize it based on different CMS items and you can really do some amazing things with it. So especially for Webflow e-commerce sites this might be a really amazing tool to use because as you know there are a few things in the Webflow e-commerce space that are currently missing. So if your email recovery is something that is important to your site, then this might be the right tool to use. Even if you're not using an e-commerce site, you can use these types of widgets to also have, for example, user reviews. So ever since discovering this tool, I've been thinking about implementing it on the Unicorn Factory to basically allow customers to review certain types of freelancers. Another thing that I found quite interesting about what they're doing is they have an affiliate program that you can set up and that might be a really great add-on to your e-commerce commerce site again here it looks like it's designed specifically for webflow which is awesome so if you are running a site then definitely go ahead and check this out as well and then last but not least I want to introduce you to member chat and member chat is a tool that again I haven't used myself before but I've seen it come up quite a bit on Twitter now the reason why I wanted to mention this is because oftentimes I see a lot of people who want to build freelancer marketplaces looking for the functionality where for example customers can talk to each other or users can talk to each other and this this tool would allow you to do exactly that. So the way that it works from what I have seen is that you can connect your Webflow sites and member stack accounts to member chat and that will then allow you to open up custom little chat rooms where different people can communicate with each other. So if you are for example building a freelance marketplace and you want to give your customers the ability to talk to your freelancers or whatever other use case you have then all you'd need to do is just install the script on your site and then you'll be able to create that type of chat functionality. And that is it. That is a variety of tools that you can use to take your Webflow project to the next level or to just improve the overall performance of your Webflow sites. I hope you found this useful. If I have forgotten any tools, please let me know in the comments down below. And before you leave, if you haven't already, quickly smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you back here for the next one.